Hey guys, what's happening? Ghost Dragon 1182 here, and in this episode of Coffee Talk, I want to talk about Konami. And I'm not going to go on this big, huge tangent about, you know, like, fuck Konami, even though, fuck Konami. But rather, what I'd like to do is kind of reminisce about when they were great. And, you know, a lot of gamers my age have fond memories of Konami. They were one of those companies that uh, just constantly, I don't want to say constantly, but I mean, a lot of the games I grew up with were Konami games. You know, the Castlevania series being one of the most notable ones had a huge impact on me because of my personal interest in, like, gothic architecture and horror movies and ghosts and goblins and things like that. And that was a series that, you know, the games that I could get my hands on, I very much enjoyed playing. Uh, you know, I started with, uh, actually I started with Castlevania 3, ironically enough, since that was at the time the first one in the, uh, the series, chronologically. And then I played one, and I remember renting two or convincing my mom to rent me too, because I was a kid, I, I didn't have the capabilities to rent video games at the time. <laughs> and, oh man, I hated to. Like, at first I was kind of like, well, you know, what do I do? And I'm like, well, it's kind of like The Legend of Zelda, you can you just gotta figure it out, you know? And then, some of the stuff in that game was just mind-boggling, as far as being complicated and... Uh, like weird shit. I mean, really, at the time, if you didn't have Nintendo Power, who the fuck was gonna know that you had to like walk all the way to the end of that one map, sit there at the in the corner, crouch down, facing I can't I can't remember how it was, but you had to have like that one crystal equipped, and then the tornado would take you to the mansion. You know, who the fuck knows that? Um, although at the time, as frustrating as it was, looking back, it kind of. It wasn't so bad. Like, it sort of set the stepping stones in place for the eventual, like, Metroidvanias where you had to kind of figure things out and you needed certain items to get here and there and everything like that. And just, it wasn't implemented good in Castlevania 2. But at any rate, I'm not going to rant on and on about that game right here. But Castlevania was a series that I just, I absolutely loved it. Um, Super Castlevania 4 is probably still my favorite. I know Blasphemy, uh, all those people that love Symphony of the Night, which Symphony of the Night is a good game, don't get me wrong. But Castlevania 4 was just, when that game came out on the Super Nintendo, that was a game that, when you saw it in action, just like with spinning backgrounds and all the crazy shit that they could do in that game, at the time, with the hardware that was available to him, that was my first taste of, like, this is what next-gen is, or what, you know, the, the power of the FX chip, or, oh, no, what was it? Oh, man, I can't remember the name of the processor that was in the Super Nintendo that they took advantage of to, like, do that stuff, but... At the time, there was nothing out there that was even remotely close to being just, like, that complex and having backgrounds that did what that game did, and it was awesome. Getting away from Castlevania, they had other franchises and licenses. Um, probably the biggest licensed games that I remember as a kid, because I was a huge fan of the franchise in general, was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. Now, that first game was fucking terrible. Uh, fuck that water level. Or with the dam where you had to swim underwater and disarm the charges and not get killed by the seaweed or whatever it was. And getting a headache just thinking about that level. Um, <laughs> it was... Alright. It kind of... Looking back, it's kind of almost like Ninja Gaiden with Turtles. It was just... It wasn't that good. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, I fucking loved that game. I beat that game so many times, I lost count. I played 
the absolute ever-loving shit out of that game. Uh, because, and I mean, I was a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, and that that game captured everything that I loved about the Turtles. It was, it wasn't like real like serious or anything like the comic books. It was, you know, more geared towards the uh, the cartoon and just the characters that were in it. And I remember being pissed off as a kid that they didn't have a figure of. Oh man, I can't remember his name. But the uh, Nintendo version for the NES had a uh, couple extra, but well, it had one extra level where you got to fight um, some kind of polar bear, and I can't remember his name now. But he was like, he was kind of decked out like a biker. But he was at the end of the snow level. And it was like I think the fourth level in the game. It was after you uh, got out of the sewers. I'm pretty sure. And, you know, once you beat him, then you had to destroy, like, this little, there was, like, a little weather device that you jump-kicked a couple times, and then the snow went away. But I just remember, like, being mad as hell that you couldn't, they didn't have a toy of that dude, because I wanted to, like, reenact the arcade game with my Turtles toys, and then they replaced, um, a Rocksteady, there was a fight where you were, in the original arcade game, you fought Rocksteady and Bebop at the same time. That was replaced with uh, Baxter Stockman in his fly form, you know, and it was just, oh, that game was so great. I'm going to have to, I have the arcade game downloaded on Xbox 360, but it's just not, as great as that is, it just doesn't, it's not as awesome as that NES game was, and I mean, some people might disagree with me there, but that's just, that was probably, that was a game as a kid that, I just absolutely loved, and to this day, I don't think I've ever had a experience with a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game like that, mostly because most of the games have sucked since then. Um, I did play Turtles in Time, but I didn't play it that much. I mean, you know, we were, my family was blue collar, we didn't have money for, or my parents didn't have money to buy me like every game that I wanted, so I mean, we, my mom would rent me one on the weekends or whatever whenever school was in, she'd would go to this, there was a old school store called Video World, and my, she'd take me there, we'd rent a game, and I'd play it for, over the weekend, and then take it back, and that was it, so I, I only got to play Turtles in Time, like, once or twice, but I do remember liking it, but I just never, you know, by the time I was old enough that I had a job and could buy my own video games, I, the Turtles franchise was pretty much largely forgotten by me. You know, inevitably, one game that gets brought up every time when you're talking about Konami is uh, Contra. And I have vague memories of Contra. I just remember playing it with friends a lot. Uh, my neighbor had it on the Genesis uh, because that's how you got to experience other consoles. You didn't have you buddied up with somebody that if you had a SNES, then you know you made sure you had that friend that had the had the Genesis and vice versa or whatever you know um, I remember going to his house and we'd play Contra uh, in that game at that age you know I remember that game being hard as fuck man but it was fun and that's a game I'd it's a shame because that's a series I would have liked to have seen eventually make a resurgence but you know I mean obviously that's not gonna happen now uh, and then you know I, I remember some other games like the Adventure Island series, which I can't tell you a whole lot of specifics about Adventure Island, but I do remember it being fun. It was just kind of goofy, you know. You remember, the dude, you played as was Master Higgins, and I remember the game being hard as hell because you died basically whenever anything touched him. <laughs> you know. Um, and there was dinosaurs. You could ride around on dinosaurs. I do remember that bit. So, but that's about all I remember. Uh, I think there was an evil witch doctor in there somewhere. But I mean, it, it, they just had franchises that, in that era, were huge, and they were timeless. I mean, my my eight year old son, he plays Bomberman, and he loves it. And I I didn't play a lot of Bomberman as a kid. I remember the game, but it just wasn't something I played a lot of. 
but my fucking kid, man, he loves Bomberman and Frogger. I mean, who hasn't played Frogger? And then, you know, as time went on and the, we got through a couple console generations, then we got um, Metal Gear Solid, which was you know, the, the follow-ups to the uh, to Metal Gear 1 and 2 on the NES. Um, Silent Hill series, that, which I played... I remember playing the first Silent Hill at a friend's house on the PlayStation. And that, I just remember being like nothing I've ever experienced before. And mind you, at the time, I hadn't played any survival horror game. So that was just one of those games that it was just like, holy crap, this is cool. And I didn't play Silent Hill 3. And I actually, I never, I went through a phase where I didn't do a lot of gaming for a few years um, because I was, I was in my late teens and I got a guitar and I discovered being in a band and, you know, I just was going to play music all the time. I didn't have any, like, pipe dreams that I was going to be, like, a famous musician or anything like that, but uh, gaming kind of fell by the wayside because my free time was spent with band practice and things of that nature. But I revisited the Silent Hill franchise with Silent Hill Homecoming. And man, did I hate that game. Oh, did I hate that game. I just could not get into it. And subsequently, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth for Silent Hill. That's a bad analogy. I don't know why people use that analogy. But it kind of turned me off from Silent Hill games after that. Until they announced the HD collection. But then... I had read stuff about the HD collection being kind of a clusterfuck that I just never got around to replaying those classic Silent Hill games. And I think that's something that now I am going to do. I'll just download, like, the PS1 classic for Silent Hill 1, and then I'm sure somewhere around this town that I live in I could probably find the PS2 games. And then there was the Metal Gear series, which the Metal Gear series... When I got back into gaming, it was right around the end of the PlayStation 2, Xbox, original Xbox era. And I didn't play any of the Metal Gear games. Now, when I bought my PlayStation 3, that was when, you know, obviously they were hyping Metal Gear Solid 4 big time. And I picked it up because it looked, it looked good. Uh, regardless of whether or not you were a fan of the series, that game just, it looked like it was going to be a damn fine game. And I loved it. And I picked up the Metal Gear Solid collection for the PlayStation 3, which had uh, 1, 2, and 3 on it. And they were they were great games. I just remember, I mean, at first, I will say that like I was not a fan of the controls. But once I got used to them, I had a blast playing those games. And I do want to get a hold of uh, five, but it's just life happens, you know. But that was a series that, for someone who didn't follow it at all and came into it late in its lifespan, that was an incredible series. And you know, I mean, obviously that's more owed to Kojima than it is to Konami. You know, they provided the finances for him to make the game, so. I, got to give them a little bit of credit and even other franchises that I was into started like show some promise again like I I really enjoyed Castlevania Lord of Shadows uh, Lords of Shadow 2 had some missteps it probably but I think the main issue with that game was not so much it was a bad game it just followed a really superb game and, but I mean, it, it showed promise that that series could be good again after a couple little missteps with what they put out on the generation before. And I didn't really have anything against Lament of Innocence in general. It wasn't a particularly strong game, but it wasn't terrible. I think it, where the flaws in that game sh came through was it was like their first foray into 3D. Uh, the combat in Curse of Darkness, which was the follow-up, was really good, if not a little heavy on Devil May Cry type of influence. 
and well, 3D action fighting games in general, but it felt a lot like Devil May Cry, which, I mean, at the time that was a series I was playing, so I mean, that could be why it felt so familiar. But I mean, once you, if you played through it as Trevor, once you beat the game, then it kind of felt a lot like Lament of Innocence, and it, that's where the weaknesses started to show. So I think they just didn't really know how to make, like, the whip combat interesting or, like, tight and fun. Whereas, you know, when you played as, uh, and I can't remember the dude's name, Hector? I don't think that was his name. But when you were basically using swords and staves and things like that, so, I mean, you, it felt very much like a Devil May Cry game. And maybe that's why I like that one a little bit more for the combat. But the stories in both of those games were largely forgettable. They did try to give an origin to the Belmonts and to Dracula in the Men of Innocence, and it just didn't. It it was all right, but it didn't didn't work that well. Uh, it was a neat premise, but they just didn't flesh it out enough. I will say though that the music in Lament of Innocence and Harmony of Dissonance, or not Harmony of Dissonance, that was a GBA title. Uh, the music in Curse of Darkness and Lament of Innocence is probably some of my favorite music in the Castlevania franchise, but I mean, that's neither here nor there. But I mean, with Lords of Shadow, they started showing promise again, like I said, and then, you know, the Metal Gear series has always been strong, and it kind of seemed like maybe with this last console generation with the PS4 and the Xbox 360 and then or not the PS4, the PS3 that console generation, you know, the games they were coming out with and their established franchises and then, you know, the Metal Gear Solid games coming out on current gen, the Xbox One and the PS4 it seemed like they were starting to kind of make a resurgence and, so, and the PT demo and Silent Hills and everything like that it just seemed like Konami was finally getting to a point where they were going to come back and they were going to be a strong contender for releasing some really solid games and re-establishing those franchises and then it just didn't happen. And it's a shame. Uh, Japanese companies tend to kind of march to their own drummer and their CEO really has no interest in video games. They make a ton of money off of their Chinko machines that they don't really need their gaming unit. Uh, the writing was kind of looking back on it. You know, they say hindsight's 2020. Looking back on some of the stuff that they talked about in like their earnings calls and things of that nature, we should have seen this coming. Uh, they were starting to focus more on mobile games. They uh, didn't really seem like they were having much of a presence at conventions like E3 and uh, GDC and things like that, they just kind of went pretty low-keyed with how they were going to go about some things. And really, this announcement that they were stopping AAA game development should have, I guess, really shouldn't have shocked anybody. And at the end of the day, what bothers me and what kind of, I guess makes me sad is that we're not going to have these franchises anymore but at the same time i'd rather have no new entry than have these uninspired half-assed releases in the franchises that they have we've had enough of those when they actually seemed like they gave a shit about game development and i guess at the end of the day you know at least we have that library of games that they have put out in the past that we can revisit <clears throat> but it's uh you know i've seen a lot of uh, videos on the subject the last couple days and a lot of people just rant and rave and are pissed off and i just i didn't want to go that route with this because i'm not really pissed off i'm just disappointed and I guess the easiest way to sum up how I feel about things is one of my favorite movies of all time is Highlander with uh, Christopher Lambert and 
Clancy Brown, there was a really great scene between the two of them in a church where Connor McLeod goes in to light a candle in remembrance of his uh, dead wife, Heather, from back in 400 years ago when he was in Scotland. And while he's sitting there, the Kurgan comes in, and they have an exchange, and one of the things the Kurgan says is, uh, it's better to burn out than to fade away. And that's what Konami did, is they're, they're fading away. And I've really been struggling with how to end this video. Um, you know, I could have went, you know, the full-on rage route and fuck Konami and things like that, but I just didn't feel... That's not the kind of video that I had in me when it came to this topic. So that's why I went the route of kind of reminiscing about the franchises. And again, you know, the point of these videos is uh, just kind of like miscellaneous topics and things like that. And eventually what I would like to do with these is if I could get people coordinated enough to participate, I would like to do like podcasty type of things. And sometimes I have a hard time condensing my thoughts down, so these kind of do run on a little bit, and for that I apologize. But um, I think I kind of made... I don't, I don't want to say I had a point with this. I just kind of... You know, there were so many... The videos I seen about Konami were all like... Like I said, they were like outrage videos. Like, fuck them, and they're fucking assholes for doing what they're doing and i mean don't get me wrong i fully agree with the things that these people are saying uh, the treatment of kojima especially was complete bullshit but i think there needed to be a reminder that at one point in time we had fun with the products and the franchises that konami had put out there and i i don't know if i made that point clear or not um you know, the problem with these videos is I don't have anybody to bounce ideas off, and that's kind of what these would be, would probably really lend themselves to, is like a podcast type situation. But, you know, I can't get people coordinated enough to do such a thing. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's, if you take the time and watch these and listen to what I'm saying, I can't, uh, I can't tell you how thankful I am that you do that. You know, I mean, it's... I watch videos by other YouTubers and to be someone that people will take the time, no matter how many people, whether it be one or two, or um, in the rare instance that I have a video that has over a thousand views, that's humbling to me. Uh, and the comments section there's a level of you know being able to interact with people in the comments section is to me that's awesome i can't there's no way i can word it to justify or clearly express my gratitude for that um, but you know i'm gonna wrap this up because i'm starting to ramble uh, because i'm not really losing my train of thought. I just don't know how to put what I'm thinking into words. So, you know, with that, um, feel free to, at any point, if you want to, in the comments section, uh, anything that you think should be a topic in one of these videos, you know, let me know, and I'll see what uh, I can drum up on it. Um, or whatever, you know, I mean, it's... That's what the point of these are, is just miscellaneous topics that have piqued my interest or things I want to bitch about or, um, you know, obviously the DSP ones are pretty popular, <laughs> but, um, I don't know, I, I, there's nowhere I can go from here in this video, so I'm just going to wrap it up with thank you for taking the time to watch, uh, you guys are fucking awesome and we'll see you in the next one.